always such a delight to bring you all you need to know in the world of entertainment. Welcome to Entertainment This Week. My name is Turayo Adedimo. Later on the show, I will be joined by one of the most versatile talent managers in the music industry. Joseph Upong led a group of boys to international fame and stardom. But more on that after Entertainment Tidbits. Samuel Falawo, a.k.a. Promer, a 300-level biology student at the University of Abuja, won the Nokia Don't Break the Beat 2013 rap competition, organized in partnership with Trace. Prometh emerged winner at the grand finale held at 10 Degrees Oregon Ikeja, beating nine other contestants, which included HEC, Mick Harry, Psycho Bars, MA, Dustin Truce, Bay Six, Jogis, Golden, and High M, taking home the cash prize of $20,000. Nigerian music star Dr. Seed's Pretty Bright to Be is officially a Nigerian lawyer. The fashion journalist and stylist was among the 5,025 new lawyers called to the Nigerian bar in Abuja. Dr. Seed was present to support her, even though he had to perform at an event same day in Lagos. Construction work on the Kelpies, the tallest sculptures in Scotland and the biggest equine sculptures in the world, has finished. The 30-meter-high, 300-ton steel horse structures are visible for miles around. Visitors will have the chance to look at them up close when they open to the public in spring 2014. Named the Kelpies after mythical water horses, they are part of a 43 million pounds redevelopment of 350 hectares of land to attract thousands more tourists and boost the local economy. I am joined by Joseph Upong, popularly known as Joey of the Style Plus Crew fame. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> he is a, a versatile talent manager, like I said before, and also an entertainment industry professional. But more on that after we talk about what's been going on in the entertainment industry. You are a professional, so you're like the best person I can talk about this with. David Joe Clock 21. I was kind of surprised. I don't know. I always thought he was a bit, bit younger or something. So, but he clocked 21. And they've also made him like an editor at large of this magazine, Tin Y. Right. Yeah, so he's like influencing a whole demographic right now. Mm. So this is, and this is at the age of 21. So it's like amazing that he has done so much at such a young age. And thanks to music, we, we can do that. Even more. Yeah, but I would just like to remind us that a lot of guys in the Western world, like uh, maybe Justin Bieber and, mm. and, you know, Miles Harris, do that do the same thing, at, right? at earlier ages. So <laughs> I'd like to say that people like David are helping us, you know, keep up with how things are to be. <laughs> yeah, there was this uh, Ice Prince concert, the opening launch of his new mm -hmm. album, and there was this tense moment where <laughs> Don Jazzy and the band walked from opposite mm -hmm. sides of the stage, playing <laughs> us, I would like to add. Yeah, you know, like yeah, if they yeah. were going exactly, to, you know? next and they just smiled, <laughs> shook, it, shook, shook themselves, hugged each other. Mm -hmm. So it makes you wonder, were these people really feuding, or was it just about publicity? You know, that's a million dollar question. I have someone who is totally convinced that this is a publicity stunt, that these guys <laughs> never fought, and that it's working. And unfortunately, the same guy still believes Tupac is alive, so, you know. But the point is that I think it was not a stunt. I think it was a real feud. Yeah, but, but it just... Yeah, I, think, I think they've gone past the, the worst parts. Oh, okay. You know, so I don't think they're pretending to be chubby with each other. Like, la like last I checked or last I heard, the band was regretting, not regretting that he made a mistake or something, but was regretting the unfortunate turn of events mm -hmm. with Mohit's crew. I mean, the band had expressed some things that I heard, like he was going to, if the crew had been together as they should have been by now, he'd be married, and by yeah. now things would be different, and all that. So he, he, I, didn't, I don't think the Coco line, Coco this, Coco that, was supposed <laughs> to be different yeah. from Mohit altogether. And ironically, I mean, the band sort of person who's always expressed the sense of unity. Mm -hmm. Like, the first time I talked to him about this sort of thing, he told me then that he was, I mean, he, he was all, he's a team player. Okay. He was all for unity, he was all for continuity. When he was in England, he was one of the guys with his crew there trying to make them stick together and so on. So I was a bit surprised when they broke up. And I tried to get to the bottom of it, but you know how you know, these things are. You never get the full story from yeah. one side. But what I, what I do know is that as a team, I, I, I don't see who would easily beat Don Jazzy 
and the van. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So these these feuds happen, and they say that in the industry you never have permanent friends or permanent enemies. So so it's said. So, so there's lots of making up and breaking up. So I think and I hope personally that this is one step forward. And then we can see some something from them because yeah. personally I feel Devanj has done his best music mm. with Don Jazzy. Yeah. He has some good stuff coming up, but him and Don Jazzy are just like yeah. I don't know, there's something about there's them. Chemistry there. a, they yeah. have a yeah. wonderful yeah. Yeah. chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So okay. Now leaving the shores of Nigeria, talking about Angelina Jolie, mm. it is said that she has she paid nineteen million dollars for a heart shaped island for her husband. And first, I want to say, okay, these are just for the surprise. Mm, <laughs> well, if, if we're hearing it and we're on TV, then yes, it's not a surprise it's anymore. Not a surprise. So maybe you should change the gift. Mm. But come on, nineteen million dollars. I'd like to ask her, if I could, exactly what they want to do with the island, because that would tell me whether it's a good deal or not. Like if it's, <laughs> if it's a tourist I attraction. Know. The Jolie and I like Okay, where they could go for family trips or something. Well, yeah, you know, I, you know, I really think, I think it's boring to be on an island all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit nicer if you've got people there, you yeah. know, coming to, to maybe see you guys or you guys are going with lots of people for a vacation, then that's fine. But if it's just an island, I mean, really, what do you do with it? What, what are you doing you know, with it? You know, they can walk around island? nude, you don't have to worry about anybody, they uh, own the island. I think, personally, you get more value for money with other kind of luxury solutions like I'd rather buy a yacht yeah. than an island mm -hmm. you know you can go to lots of places with a yacht mm -hmm. and you can change it and that if you want to buy an island you build a big castle there and make a tourist attraction that's yeah, fine yeah I get that mm. okay and also um, Hugh Jackman mm, has revealed that Rory, <laughs> that's my guy yes he, he talked about the fact that he just discovered he had skin cancer mm. and he was he took a picture of it put it on the social media and then said that we should not be like him right. we should get ourselves checked as soon as possible and all that and it's surprising. You don't think of celebrities as being human like we are. They really? are human, but you just kind of forget that. <laughs> oh, really? I, I didn't know they forgot that. The last time I checked, they were very, very human. Because they have money, and you think, that, okay, this kind of things should not mm. happen to them. And yet, he wasn't, you know. Well, I, I think we should. We should I, I mean, I, I don't. Cancer. First of all, I think all of us should be very realistic. A celebrity is like any other person, just mm. gets much more time on TV. That's it, <laughs> you know? And. In any case, this is a good reminder because uh, when Steve Jobs, Apple CEO, died two years ago or mm. so, people were shaking. How could Steve Jobs die? I mean, Steve so, Jobs. Yeah. Even Obama commented about Steve Jobs dying. You know, but these people have, and he died from cancer. Mm. I, I think Bob Marley died from skin cancer as mm -hmm. well. Last I checked, and I, my dermatologist told me um, that skin cancer is one of those elusive ones that people usually ignore. Yeah. You know, smoking can cause lung cancer. We're used mm -hmm. to hearing that, that, but we're not used Everybody to looking out for that. skin cancer. So that's the thing, and it's very elusive. And, I'm totally with Hugh Jackman. I like his advice. Like he said, he went to check, I think, because his wife like, urged him to check and mm. so on. And all of us take these routines. You know, you have malaria, now you rush to the hospital because it's, it's on you. But yeah. you don't, we don't do these background checks as much as we should. So I think he had to operate on his nose, Hugh mm -hmm. Jackman also. Yeah. And, and, and that, then he, he took the picture with the bandage. And so on. So just imagine the implication. I mean, if he didn't catch it on time, Right yeah. now, I'm sure they can do some plastic surgery yeah. and make it back normal. People have lost the whole nose. You see that sort of thing, and really, just because he didn't check on time. So mm -hmm. I, I like what he advised people to do. I think it's a smart suggestion, and I would check myself. I think you should check yourself, <laughs> and let's pray for Hugh Jackman so Wolverine okay. can remain in the X-Men. Okay, noted. I have to get a dermatologist like start. <laughs> to start, well, yes, yeah, really, really. Uh, it's not something we take for granted. But as like, like I said, we need Wolverine. I don't know who Hugh Jackman is. I know Wolverine. <laughs> okay. So we need Wolverine to be. Alive. You know, all the, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then um, talking about like this famous feud between Paris Hilton mm. and Lady Gaga. And he has sworn now that he's never going to reconcile. You know, they've been having this Twitter war. Mm. And I can be very cynical about all these kind of things because it's like, are these people really fighting? <laughs> so, but he has said a lot of. He said that she has said a lot of unforgivable things mm. about him. And he has also accused her of, you know, she's a drug addict and all this kind of thing. He also so, said she uses people and dumps people uh, and she's not loyal and she's full of air, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you know the truth about these sorts of things? I think they're just unfortunate because, uh, you know, this is Stitch in Time Saves Nine. Yeah, I'm one of those people who believes that whatever quarrel you have with anybody, the smallest person, the biggest person, mm. whether you're right or wrong, try to make peace on time. Yeah. You know, I, I, I live by that principle. And this is what happens when you don't make peace on time. It has become such a huge deal, so big and mm -hmm. messy. Everybody is now, I don't really like but, but, the but fact let's, that. But let's be honest about something. It's just headline news for a short while. I mean, mm. after two, three days, you won't hear much about this until someone says something again between two of them. <laughs> 
you know, and they both have their their worlds and so on, and apparently can live without each other and everything. But I, I, it's really unfortunate when people work together very well, or are together as a couple or as friends or whatever, yeah. and then it all burns it ends up. Badly. And then there's the mudslinging. That that's the thing. So I think a lot of people underestimate that thing. And from little I could hear, I I, I wouldn't want to take sides because I don't know Paris Hilton personally nor Lady Gaga, but I don't think he would say all those things out of nothing. Totally nothing. And unfortunately, the world is more of a Gaga fan, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, so, so everybody's it's, saying... It's, 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 exact, mm -hmm. it's not even, you know. So I want to stand by the guy who's a bit smaller. <laughs> and say, hey, what about if she's wrong? Yeah. yeah. I just feel that, well, I don't know. I just feel it's a bit immature to be mm. having a Twitter war and just, you know, be uploading pictures about uh, each other in an unfavorable mm. light. But, but usually that happens when people are very badly hurt and yeah, they have no other Yeah, they want to lash out. You know, there's this TV show I used to watch back in the video. It's called The Grudge Match. <laughs> and you have, if I have a problem with you, and it's not serious enough to go to court, but it's serious enough for us to be fighting. They say, okay, you know what? You guys go wear pads and go and fight. I mean, there's no blood. It's a very gentle fight, but you have this protection and this big, like, soft you stick. Like then you're in the get ring. Your yeah, yeah, sure. Everyone's around. I mean, it's a TV <laughs> thing. Like, okay, fine. You, you took this from me. I took that from me. Let's settle it now. And they hit each other, and no one gets hurt. And you laugh and hug and go home. So yeah. maybe we should, we should take two of them to the grudge match and make me the referee, <laughs> and I'll be fine. Okay, let's talk about movies now. Um, Hunger Games Catching Fire, which is the sequel to, you know, the first Hunger Games. Yeah, it has blazed straight to the top of the uh, uh, movie charts. It, it's on the road, on track to being the biggest 2D movie ever made, so I heard. I mean, in terms of, you know, gross this and that. Yeah. You did I, mention earlier that you're not such a huge fan of Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, see, this is the thing. Okay, let me differentiate two things. One thing is to be a fan of something, another thing is to be, to respect it, mm. you know. Uh, that's an easy example would be... Uh, Twilight. Oh, that's the best example. That is the <laughs> best example. I wouldn't watch Twilight if you paid me. <laughs> Seriously. I, w I, I could try, like, do 10 minutes, you know? So the thing is... But I'm honest enough to say, look, the thing has mad following. I mean, people love it. I think Hunger Games is a, is, a, is a runaway success. And if they maintain this momentum, I think they want to make one every year. Yes, because the books, uh, there are actually three books, and the books are really huge. Okay. I read the books, and there are a lot of things, and, mm. you know, I can't really wait to see right. the screen. Are you rivaling Harry Potter? Because that's the same thing with Harry Potter. They made the books, <laughs> yeah. and then this thing, and yeah. Game of Thrones as well. Twilight, the too. And, there were the books. Before the movie? Before the movie. Okay, well, yes. let's write a book, and maybe you know, five years from now, we'll have the, you know, run away success. Last, we'll talk about the stunning death of one of our most 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 loved characters on Family Guy, the mm. talking dog. He was killed off, and now there's this huge uproar, and people are demanding that he be, he's brought back to life yeah. because we can't <laughs> imagine Life's Family Guy <laughs> without the talking dog. Mm. So, do you you know about it? I'm sure you watch Family Guy. Well, well, it may not be a well. I think the first thing I want to say is that with cartoons. Bringing people back from the dead is always easy. Yeah. You know, much, <laughs> much easier than with that movies. Life. Like, honestly, <laughs> that you know, movies. that kind of thing. And, and the person who they should tell about this bring back from the dead thing, are the two guys I have, the guy who made 24 and the guy who made Game of Thrones, because they keep killing <laughs> all our best characters. So I know, I mean, back to the point. I think um, they kill the guy off, the character off, to, to stir controversy, and that sometimes can, can, can reignite people's passion mm -hmm. and so on. But with the outrage or outcry or whatever people are making, I honestly <laughs> believe the public will go to, I mean, the producers will review the issue. Yeah. And if you know, in 1994, when Superman was killed, the death of Superman, it was headline news. <laughs> right? no, it was. It was in Time Magazine, and CNN, <laughs> Superman is dead. People couldn't, it, the, the book, The Death of Superman, one of the highest selling books of all time, mm. at that time. So when the whole world said, how could you kill him? You know, the one guy called Doomsday in the car, in thing mm, killed yeah, Superman. Yeah. They brought him back to life. <laughs> so let's hope the same thing happens for <laughs> the dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll take a short break right now to watch a video from the Star Plus crew when Joey was still their manager. And mm. then we'll be right back to find out some more about Joey. So don't go anywhere.
So now it's all about Joey. Mm, so tell us, <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Who is Joseph Ukbong? Who is Joey? Well, where do I start from? I'm just a simple guy mm -hmm. who likes doing different things. And people call me entrepreneur. Anyway, jokes apart. Well, Joey, as you know me, is Joey of Style Plus, as I'm more popularly known. Um, the, man, the former manager of the Style Plus group. Okay, well, that was Style like Plus. the first group that really brought you into the limelight. Oh yeah, sure. That's been my flag group. I mean, I've worked with many different artists in different capacities, yes. quite a lot, mm -hmm. you know. But I was running Style Plus for about six years. Okay. So and then that was my main incursion to entertainment, and a lot came out of it. So yeah, yeah so people knew me for that. Yeah. So that's that, and it was a very, very good and interesting adventure, <laughs> which I would dare say still is continuing in different forms. So now I'm, okay. I'm not managing them anymore, but we work together on different okay, things. Is there still a uh, relationship between Oh, sure, your... yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. We just did an event two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, tell us how you got into being a talent manager. Mm. Why not be the one holding the mic? I, you know, the truth is this, I'm an honest person. <laughs> uh, I never wanted to do music. I never did. I honestly, I didn't like, I wasn't one of those guys fascinated and all that. I, I wanted to do my own thing, my computer thing, okay. IT. And my friend, one of my best friends ever, who is known as Shifi, oh. you know, came to meet me long before you guys heard of Stop and said, Joey, we need to move forward and we have all kinds of issues and we need you to work with us. And we had this debate about this. This was about 2002. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's wrong with me and music? He said, no, let's just look. I know I need you. You know, you're the right kind of guy. I can trust you. You have the ability, this and that. Let's, let's do something. I said, fine, let's try. And then we did try. And after a while, you heard a little from me. Yeah, you know? I remember that. Yeah, sure. So anyway, I guess I remember the first time I heard that. The first time I heard that. That yes. was in 2003. And there are different characters who all contributed in fantastic ways to make what you heard. Mm -hmm. You only hear the song, but you wouldn't know, you don't, you wouldn't know who the did work, this and did that. Yeah, Sunki and Mikoya were producers. Yeah. They did a lovely job. Mm -hmm. and teachers and myself were the managers. And I had other guys like Shinedu and Akin who mm -hmm. did great work that you guys wouldn't see. And that was the first, as I'm sure you know, shortly after that, Call My Name came out. And you go, like, ah, you guys do this again, and so on. Yeah, it was, I, I, I dare say Style Plus um, helped with the revolution. Okay. You know, there's sort of this, uh, we can say there are two phases, so to speak, in the Afro hip-hop and Nigerian mm -hmm. hip-hop in the last three, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And Style Plus among the people, also with Peace Square and yeah. Two-Face, mm -hmm. that sort of upgraded the way things yes, are being done. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so that's an indelible mark, which we all you know, appreciate. You know, they kind of made sure that... Um, talent was part of the package, not just, okay, let's dance. Yeah, the game's different right now, very, very different, but the principles remain the same. 
you know, like you asked about what got me in talent management. I mean, that was my entry point. Okay. Now, in the process of being selfless manager, as an artist manager, we, I became an events manager, and statement consultant, and everybody and so will on. come and start meeting you and say, okay, mm. I want you to do for me what you did. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I say, I'll try, <laughs> but it's not so easy, you know? <laughs> okay, so yeah. base, you have so much history with Star Plus, yeah, so it sure. makes one wonder. The burning mm. question is, dun, dun. why the breakup? <laughs> well. Did you see it coming? Was this something you expected? Well, that's a very tricky question. I mean, I would like normally I would avoid the question because it's you asking me. I'll answer <laughs> to some extent. I'd say that I saw something coming. Okay. Not necessarily the breakup. I saw something coming because. Um, there are many changes of strategy and philosophy in the group from when I started to when I left to mm -hmm. after I left. Like I said, we still work together. Mm -hmm. And at certain times, you find out that you, you just find it too difficult to reconcile some principles with, with another person. Mm -hmm. And usually when that happens, even outside music, people experiment on different things. Like basically Tunde has, I'm not sure if you've heard of songs, he has some other songs he, he released as a solo artist okay. even before the group broke up mm -hmm. and so on. So. I, I just figured out that the chemistry they had together was fading away. Mm. And when it faded, it was just a matter of time before new things came. But like I didn't they were growing and they were growing in different directions. Yeah, more like going in different directions, <laughs> not growing in different directions. Yeah, I mean, if I have to be technical. Okay. So yeah, so basically I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think it was going to be that. And when it came, I said, well, you know, life goes on, you know. <laughs> Based on your experience with the Star Plus crew, what's, uh, what do you think are the main things that will help a music group to stay together? There are many combinations that are possible. Uh, do you know how the Wu-Tang Clan operates? I mean, you have a, a general idea. Yeah, there, I know that they... a large number of people. And but they have solo albums, exactly, but you know, they also... Exactly, a, and so on. Back in the day, remember the way uh, the Death Row record, well, well, with Dr. Dre and Ice Cube and Snoop, Snoop back then? Yeah. You know, you would have many different combinations for projects and so on. I think that's like the best formula, where you're all under one umbrella, so you, you have your independence, your exactly. Mm. And then you all agree on the priority so that you don't contradict each other. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. So uh, I do agree, I do, I believe there's, there's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. So people coming together is a good thing. But you should also be realistic about lifespans. But what I think the ultimate winning formula is, is this. You should be the sort of person who as a solo act can do well. Mm -hmm. As a member of a trio or duo, it can do well. And as part of one big posse, you can also do well. Yeah. And that's more about attitude than talent mm. and this is where many people have it wrong many young artists have it upside down they think that with the right talent alone everything works I mean I think one of the most talented musicians of all time is Michael Jackson yeah but unfortunately toward, after the thriller era or rather yeah. after is it bad the bad album, bad album yeah people kept saying that his attitude was getting worse yeah. and, his management and so on. you saw how things went over the last yeah. 10 years it's not his talent it's his attitude yeah because he had one of the ama most amazing talents ever known exactly exactly music. meanwhile uh, contrast some people like uh, maybe the Rolling Stones or U2 you know mm -hmm. who've been performing forever you know, how come? It's, it's an attitude thing. I want to underscore that. So mm -hmm. my advice to young artists coming up is focus on the right attitude and, and then you'll be able to work with people. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Okay, now let's play a game called Fun Facts. Hmm. What is your phobia? Well, I don't like snakes and I don't like heights. Okay. Yeah, but I like parachuting. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, it's a contradiction, that's right? confusing. Yeah, exactly, but whatever, next. <laughs> Shoe size? 11 and a half. Height? A five foot nine. Allergies? Uh, chloroquine <laughs> <laughs> and <Fa> pollen. <laughs> Favorite color? Uh, sky blue. Okay, role model. Okay, the truth. The role model I had when I was growing up was a non-existent character. You know Captain Picard from Starship Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, that was my role model. That's the truth. That's the guy I wanted to be like. And he doesn't not not Patrick Stewart, not the actor. I know Captain the, Picard. Yeah, okay. That was my role model and Batman. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> Two people really. who do not exist. Exactly. But okay. but the ones who did exist, people like Gandhi, okay. man of peace, and Master Yeshiba of Aikido. <laughs> yep. Okay, hobby. Chess. Crush. Never had one. Celebrity crush. <laughs> Honestly, the uh -huh. last celebrity crush I had was when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. Seriously, I don't have crushes. But she was uh, Vivica Fox. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. I get that. But that was over almost 20 years ago. I mean, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, last question. Social media, waste of time or useful tool? Very useful tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think if you balance your time properly, social media makes us do things much easier. Like, I grew up in the era where you would write letters, you know, paper, 
and literally go to people's houses. You would like flash someone and say, hey, guy, your day house. No, you actually go there and it's not around and you come back in two hours time. So social media is very useful to do all sorts of things. But I think many of us get carried away because one of the worst problems with social media is we need to replace our real relationships. Mm. And then you see a guy like on Facebook, you chat every week, but you haven't seen him face to face in two years and lives near your house. Mm. So that's not good. And I'm one of those who thinks you should strike a balance. Yeah, I get that. Okay, now tell us about you know, your being a talent manager. Tell us what you love about it and what you hate about it. Um, I love the diversity of what I'd encounter. Like I said, while t managing talent or managing stoplets, I think that's what you're asking directly, mm -hmm. I, I would do events management, I would do program, project management, I would do talent management, mm -hmm. I would be a co-producer in the studio. So I had all kinds of things that were unrelated and that I used for my other enterprises. Okay. There's a lot of diversity. What I don't like about it is, oh, two, two big things. One thing is the music industry in Nigeria has a lot of problems that make the, the finance, finances not work out properly. So you have mm -hmm. lots of investment and it's hard to recoup. That's an industry problem. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm one of those who try to help that, not just my, my group. Okay. Second thing is the uh, artificiality of certain things. I mean, let me make a small example. Everyone sees a musician or a TV star and says, hey, you're a role model. And I don't like the fact that many of us will rather hear from an actor or a sportsman than from our pastor or a teacher in our school or a doctor yeah. in a hospital. Because many celebrities are very far from being role models for anyone, not even for their own family. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And what I don't appreciate is the fact that people put them on a pedestal, but they don't accord the same regard to other people. Because who it's not really approve. about their character, I think. It's yeah. just about what they represent. Fame, yeah. money. Exactly. You know? you know, if, if, you see, if we could put things in perspective, like if I want to admire a soccer player, I can look at David Beckham and say, yes, this guy's soccer is Great, it's perfect. But I shouldn't imagine that it makes him automatically a good friend or a good businessman or things like that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can admire a celebrity for what the person does. Mm. But when we extend it outside yeah. that sphere and you do the reverse, which is you see people who are doing a lot for you, but we don't extend them that same Regard, courtesy. Yeah. And that's part of the problem with society. So in, in showbiz, it's, you're completely you know, surrounded by that thing. You, know, you have another, th okay, even inside the industry, one guy's song is two times better than the other guy's song. Yeah. But because this second guy's song is more popular here and now, people say things like, this guy has faded away, he's mm -hmm. old times and that. So they, they, there's all that's that. That's kind and, of irritating. Oh, yes, it is, it is, it is. You know, and, and all, it's very, there's that, and that's not the sort of person I am, so mm -hmm. I don't appreciate that. But okay. besides that, I mean, it's fun to be <laughs> okay. So tell us what you're working on right now and where you see your career in the future. I see myself as a consultant, project manager, who will continue to work in entertainment okay. and IT and, and these things. I think uh, even besides the business angle, which is making money, there's the need for what I would say, the, the social communications world mm -hmm. to have certain kinds of input. Like I'm, I'm very much interested in, one of my favorite shows of all time is uh, Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> really? Seriously? I mean, I can remember the songs from when I was in primary school yeah. till now. Sunny days, yeah, yeah, clouds away, and all that. <laughs> the thing is, why why I like that? It was very entertaining. Kids liked it, and kids learned from it. It's yeah. edutainment. Yeah. You know, edutainment. So, mm -hmm. I'm one of those who wants to to build on that. So, even in music now, I'm more interested in general in in music that promotes social development. Like, you remember our song "Stay Alive" from Style Plus about yeah. HIV? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things like that, and things that help you know uniting the country yeah. and all that. So. You'll see, uh, I'll put a lot of effort into that in the next few years. I okay. mean, hopefully you notice some of it. Okay, that's great. I really like it when, you know, I'm just not thinking about making money, mm -hmm. but doing something to affect your world, something that will remain even when you've left, yeah. you know, the world. So it was really lovely having you on the show. I'm mm -hmm. really glad you could make it. <laughs> Sorry, you have to come to my own show and you answer all these questions. I haven't recorded. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Thank so you. I hope you had a great time. Perfect. Couldn't be better. <laughs> okay, guys, so make it a date with me again next week for all you need to know about your favorite celebrities on NTA Entertainment. See you next week.